Hey everybody, I am Samuel Fatim the Dragon Singer today. And today we're joining yet another um, uh, uh, interview with someone who did well at this past States. And we're also doing a deck list. He has been gracious enough to share up, share his list with us. And his name is Hale Obernolte. Yeah, thank you for being here. I pronounced it correctly, correct? <laughs> yep, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Woo! Victory for me. I'm good. <laughs> Alright, um, so, yeah, he managed to top 32 and even go into top 8 in California states, is that correct? Yeah, I uh, made it all the way to the finals before I ended nice. my streak. So, and just to double check, you are a Masters, correct? Yeah. Alright, I figured as much as thought I'd just, you know, ask, because you never know. Weird things have happened, but, um, let's see what else I want it. Um, so yeah, this was, yeah, actually, this is what I wanted to ask, uh, what week was this? Week two or three? Three. Okay. Wow, I like to, wow, week three people wanting to do interviews with me. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, before we get too much into this, tell us why you decided to play your ninja in, in uh, California. You know, actually, it's a really funny story. Um, I, I had not been playing uh, for a long time this season. My, my last tournament before California States was actually Worlds. Um, I, I just didn't have the time really to play. I just kind of put on a side burner so you like take a season off. Um, and then uh, for the two weeks before California States, I was on break from school and so I had some time. So I was like, oh, I'll play around with the format. Yeah. Um, I was actually testing for uh, expanded for regionals at first. And then I looked online and saw that California States was the third week and it was only about uh, an hour and a half away from where I lived. So I said, oh, I might as well go there. So um, switched all my decks to standard instead of expanded and uh, talked to my friends about the format. Um, everyone was kind of telling me play uh, Night March, and that was my plan before the tournament was to play Night March because I would try to make decks with beat Night March and they would lose to Night March. Um, just because the deck was just so consistent compared to everything else, it was um, just crazy. Um, so I, mean, I tested Toad, I tested Trevenant, I tested a lot of different things. Um, wasn't really happy with how any of them were performing. Uh, and then finally, I tested Greninja. Um, and at first, I was running the more standard version with uh, Wallies and Rare Candies and everything, and I really enjoyed the deck, um, but I thought that it was really inconsistent. Um, hmm. what, so what, what deck do you thought was inconsistent? Greninja with Wallies and Rare Candies and everything. Oh, okay. Um, so, but I, st I mean, my expectations going to the tournament weren't too high because I'd taken so much time off. Yeah. Um, so I kind of figured, you know what, I, I, I'm enjoying playing this deck. God knows I didn't want to play Night March. Um, so I kind of figured I'd just go for Ninja. Um, and then two days before the tournament, I was looking online and I saw uh, Misa's list. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, and it's very similar to what I ended up playing. And he uh, opted to not use Wallies, not use Rare Candies, and go for a much more consistent build of the deck. Um, and I tested that, really liked it, made some changes of my own, but I ended up going with that build. And I, uh, I actually went into the tournament not with high expectations, I kind of figured this is a really fun deck that I enjoy playing. Um, and then, cause, cause I, I really didn't expect to do well because I had taken so much time off. And then, I ended up doing well, so. <laughs> wow. So that's, for, that's pretty cool. That sounds pretty cool to hear, like, someone just takes a bunch of time off, just shows up for German and, and does well. But walk us through your entire tournament. What did you play against round one? Round one, so, uh, round one I was against a really weird Night March. I mean, Round one pairings. Uh, it was mm. Night March with Toad. Um, yeah, really interesting. Don't know how it would have worked against other decks, but I mean, huh. I, the, Night March is already a good matchup, and the Toad actually just made it better. So, um, just ran through that basically with Jirachi. Mm -hmm. Toad might be might have been a little weird since you do play rough seas, and they might have been they would they probably would have been able to heal off some of their damage, some of the damage you were dealing to them. But you weren't probably that worried about it. Yeah, um, generally it's really nice because um, though other decks that I played against could abuse rough seas like uh, Toad and Minetric, even though I didn't play against Minetric, yeah. um, I found that it's a lot more impactful for the Greninja player because they tend to be swapping around a lot more um, and have a lot more burst potential than the other decks do. So it's a lot more important for the Greninja to heal. I mean, when a Sizemoto is hitting you for 40 and you're healing 30 a turn, it's really significant as opposed to healing 30 off of 80. Plus ah, abilities. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm guessing you 2 0 that deck, correct? Yeah, that was a 2 0. Alright, what did you play in round 2? I played against a Toad Tina deck. That was another quick 2 0. I mean, it just 
tons of special energy. Jirachi just takes so much steam out of that deck that it's just yeah. an auto win, pretty much. Yeah, you play, like, three Jirachi, so that just makes that really easy for you. Not to mention, like, sure, they shut off your stadiums, but, you know, there's t like, gear two does nothing. That's, like, the main way to, for them to do damage. And not to mention, like, sure, they have to shut off your items in, but you, you know, outside of, like, turn two, you should be fine with Frogadier. As long as you get a Frogadier, you should be fine. I mean, even then, I actually found that, you know, as long as I get, like, two Jirachis, I can stall out the game long enough to generally win it. Like, it, because they only run special energy and they're so yeah. reliant on it, it's just absurd how powerful Jirachi is in that matchup. Yeah. So, year two going to round three. Uh, what did you play there? Uh, round three was a mirror matchup. Um, oh, mirror that was match. another 2-0. Another um, mirror is generally a really crappy matchup to play. Um, it's basically a deck out matchup. Mm -hmm. Um my the first game my opponent didn't realize that I guess he didn't test the mirror but he burned through cards trying to get more setup than me when the setup doesn't really matter that matchup so he decked out um, and then game two he caught on to what he was supposed to do but uh, the Shauna which he didn't seem to run a Shauna um, really helps the mirror matchup in that case so I was able to win the second game by deck out. Yeah. Uh, I saw like a, a, a mirror match in. Uh the expanded format on a, I believe it was Florida Regional stream, and, like, two people who, like, were playing the exact 60 card list, like, it was over in, with, like, the, like, three games were over in ten minutes because, like, whoever, like, I, I believe it was whoever got set, got the Frogadier set up won, but, like, that was an entire different list, so. Well, it, it's, um, generally, if, if both players are able to get their set up, um, the, whoever gets it first, it doesn't really matter because generally you just don't have enough damage to kill anything. Mm -hmm. um, the the only exception to that is like if you do like a if your opponent takes a prize and you can ace trainer them, or in this case my opponent was playing a judge, so he would try to judge me, and then try to get more damage in with Moonlight Slash and hope that I didn't have water energy to uh, um, really take advantage of that. But generally, the safest play is to just um, use. Uh, Shadow stitching every turn to just lock out your opponent's ability to do damage, and the rough seas just makes it into a matchup where nothing really happens. Yeah. Well, you said shadow stitching, but I thought the list you uh, gave to me, uh, the, or at least the one you showed me, it, it did not play a single uh, sh uh, uh, shadow stitching. Oh, no, it's, it's three of the shadow stitching and one of the XY. Oh, okay. Alright. My bad. Because apparently, because I've been, because like I've been showing a the wrong list, like the wrong list, a little bit. Then, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I used three shadow stitching, one XY. Mm -hmm. I, I almost didn't even include the XY. Actually, uh, right. it it didn't seem too useful to me in a lot of matchups, but I figured I'd put it in there for the potential. Mm -hmm. So, that was a quick two zero. So, uh, from what you said, so what did you play in uh, round four? At this point, you're three zero. So that must be yeah. a wonderful feeling. Yeah, it was, it was really good actually to um, come back after so long and you know start off undefeated. And my, my brother was undefeated too, and this was actually his first tournament at Masters, so wow. we were both feeling pretty good. Uh, round four, I was against Night March. Um, that was another two zero. Um, wow. It wasn't a toad; it was a straight up Night March list, you know, traditional. No um, melodic. So Did have any mail? No, no, no melodic. No, no anything. Just uh, basic base uh, Night March. Mm -hmm. um, what, Jirachi still plays a really large part in that matchup because um, generally what my plan in plan is is you know turn two get a frog gate here and water duplicates um, and then they set up a night march and kill it and then generally my plan from there is send up a Jirachi um, ace trainer them if I can and just stardust them um, while I'm sitting at my bench and even if they you know Sandra around it and kill off a bench frog gate or maybe even a Greninja I just stardust them again like that's that's why Jirachi is so powerful is that for just the basic and the one energy, you always have a response to the DCE, so they can't just keep running through, they have to keep finding those answers. Yeah. So you are now 4-0, so you're running hot. How do you feel at this point being 4-0? Uh, it, it was a really weird feeling. Um, I was kind of surprised. I mean, again, I really wasn't expecting a whole lot. I mean, I knew yeah. I was a good player, and I knew it was a good deck, but I had taken so much time off, I really... Um, you and thought I, you were I, rusty. Yeah, I rusty. thought I was rusty, and I, I I thought I didn't spend enough time preparing, which I, I really didn't. But, <laughs> um, yeah. So and I, uh, just no, just looking around all the top tables at that point, it, everything was just a good matchup. So I was I was excited. So what did you play against round in round five? Round five was another night march. Um, this one 
uh, actually ended up being a tie. Um, game one, I got a really slow start. He already was able to take uh, two prizes before I was able to get a water duplicates out. Uh -huh. um, so it came down really close, but he was able to inch out the win on that one. Um, in the game two, I won it just pretty much how Brain Ninja is supposed to work against Night March, and yeah. then it came down to time, and so it was a tie. Water damage everywhere! <laughs> so, uh, so you're 401, which is still technically undefeated, uh, going into round six. Yep. What did you play there? Uh, I was like, then I was against a Waylord deck. It was not a totally typical Waylord deck. It used uh, Durant and Hound Doom EX, but um, Hound Doom EX obviously didn't use against me because that's an easy one shot for Greninja. Mm -hmm. um, that matchup was an easy 2 0. Waylord's always a good matchup for Greninja. Um, I, oh, because you can just. You, like, they're, they're healing off your damage, but at the same time, you can just continue to just put damage on every turn, not to mention. If they're going to use their hammers and stuff, it doesn't really affect you since you're using Moon Knight, like Moon Knight spat, Slash. Yeah, um, but basically how the, night, how the matchup works out is, um, I, I know a lot of people in the uh, Whaler matchup are going to try to go for a really big setup. Yeah. Um, but really, uh, the, what I found the best way to go about it is just get two Greninja out, you know, I'll, I'll only water duplicates for one more Frigate here. Um, then you eventually get two Greninja Breakout, um, and then just every turn you're Moonlight Slashing for 80. Um, and because you keep returning your water energy to your hand, they can't disrupt you really. Um, and then as you know, their buff seeds also healing thirty per turn. But as soon as they leave that fifty damage on the Waylord, they fail to Cassia as it or Max Potion it or whatever. Yeah. Um, you can giant water shuriken, retreat giant water shuriken, and moonlight <laughs> slash and knock it out. So really, it's it's just a waiting game of as soon as they fail to heal it, you can take two prizes. Okay, that's that's pretty that's pretty interesting. So so the, uh, that's I actually think Waylord is the absolute. I, I I don't see how you could ever lose to Waylord unless you have like three breaks prized or something. Or you just don't have a good start. No, I mean even then because I mean Waylord's not fast. You know, yeah. you have so much time against Waylord, especially with Shauna. So you you have time to get your setup. Yeah. How you can lose against a uh, uh, against Waylord is if you're bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, essentially, and if you overextend and you know burn through your deck trying to get your setup too fast, um, that's a, that's an easy way to overextend and lose. But so generally, if you just play it safe and play it slow, it's an easy matchup. Yeah. So you're now five oh one in like California states, uh, which is basically regionals. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So you're five. So you're five oh one at this regionals, and you're going to round to seven, which I think, like, I think at this point you're. You basically at this point in round seven, you just need to win. You're pretty much in uh, for the most part, correct? Yeah, six wins was uh, we we knew, we knew pretty much six wins was guaranteed, and especially with the uh, the one tie I already had, so I knew I basically had to win one of the uh, next three rounds. So, how are you feeling going into this round? Uh, kind of the same, just kind of shocked. Um, like, well, how am I around, doing this good? <laughs> I know it, it was so unexpected. Um, looking around at all the top tables, uh, everything was such a good matchup. I saw, you know. Some Evil Tall, which is a great matchup. Toad, which is a great matchup. Night March, which is a great matchup. Uh, just generally all matchups that I was really happy with. So, all right, what did you play in round seven? Round seven, I was against a Speed Dark Ride deck, um, which it was uh, a bit different because I, I mean, I again, I had not tested this format much at all. <laughs> um, going into it, I had no idea what my game plan was. Um, game Can't one. Hold me. Yeah, game game one. I uh, think I went too much for I went too much for damage. Basically, um, I, I I didn't realize that uh, shit was the good one. The, the Malamar EX. I, I hadn't thought about Malamar EX. Ah. Um, so he was able to bench Malamar EX and attach energy to it, and then do Dark Rise second attack for one shot on Greninja Break. Uh -huh. uh, so that that was something that just like, not being prepared um, caught me off guard. Um, so he was able to do that, and he was able to win game one off of that. Uh -huh. um, after after that I readjusted, I realized I had to play the slower. Um, make sure I always shadow stitching, and just slowly put damage on his board and put, uh, start playing damage on bench dark rise with giant water shuriken. Um, so I, I tried doing that, kind of playing it slower and safer, um, and I was able to win games two and three off of that. Nice, nice, nice. So you're now six oh one, and you're in basically. So yeah, that's, that's, I, I knew at that point that it was guaranteed day two. So in in rounds eight and nine, did you decide that you would want they would play that you would play out, or well, actually, just rent, let's talk about round eight for now. Did you in round eight? Did you decide you wanted to play out, or uh, or just t take an ID? I wanted to play it out because uh, I I knew what my opponent was playing. I knew he was playing Trevman. 
and Trevenant was a matchup that I was confident with. Um, yeah. So and, and matchups carry over to day two, or your uh, record carries over to day two. So I didn't want to take an ID. I wanted to take that matchup. Yeah, you yeah you might as well like take uh, play it out a little bit. Like I see some people like who feel like they don't need to like play it out, but like to a certain degree, I feel like people should just so you can like you know like give yourself a better advantage going into the next uh, day. Yeah, well, I, a lot of people were IDing around me, and I wasn't really sure why, because it's like they didn't need more points to make day two. They were already guaranteed day two, so I didn't see why they would ID as opposed to try to play it out. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I guess the reason is probably we had no dinner breaks, so they wanted to go get dinner, because it was about uh, 7 or 8 o'clock at this point. Oh, well, yeah, that's probably what it was. So, what, uh, I'm guessing your opponent wanted to ID, though, right? Uh, I don't think he offered an ID, no. Okay. So, okay. So, what was your opponent playing in round eight? Uh, round eight was Trevenant. Okay. Oh, yeah, you said Trevenant. Yeah. Um, game one, I uh, stalled out, couldn't play anything. It, it, it wasn't just the Trevenant lock, it was just horrible drawings. I had all Pokemon. and um, So, I lost game one really quickly. Uh, game two was a full legitimate game. Um, we both got set up, but, I mean, four Rusties is such a rough thing for Trevenant to deal with. Yeah. Um, so, as, as long as I get set up, that's a really, really good matchup for me. And um, as long as you make sure you, like, try not to put down too many Jirachi. Yeah, I mean, actually, what's interesting, um, you can actually purposely throw down one Jirachi to die mm -hmm. to open up Ace Trainer as a possibility. Oh, yeah, Just, I just, about just that. really, I mean, one prize card is not a problem. It, um, as long as you get set up, you're going to win. So, so I, basically, I actually, it's the prize bait. Yeah, so, so I actually would purposely bench Jirachi. Um, to open up Ace Trainer. That's a um, next level place right there. <laughs> so so game two, um, we both got set up, but I mean, as long as Greninja gets set up, as long as I get supporters, it's going to be a win for Greninja. Yeah. Um, and then game three, same thing happened to him that happened to me. Game one, basically, he had nothing, so I just rolled through him in game three. Nice. So you're now uh, 7 one I'm pretty sure you're probably feeling. Like you, like you said before, a little, like, how am I doing this good and a little ecstatic, probably. Yeah, it, it, it felt really good to know that, you know, uh, even after taking so much time off, I was still, you know, decent at the game. Oh, you know, you're pretty, no, I would say at this point you're, you're good. <laughs> you're pretty good. So anyway, um, final round. Uh, what does your opponent play? Because you said you didn't want to ID, so I'm guessing you didn't ID here either. Yeah, uh, round nine was Night March. Um is actually a friend of mine, and he wanted the ID because he knew what I was playing and he knew the matchup. And I obviously didn't want to take the ID because it's such a good matchup for Green Ninja. Um, typical Night March matchup, like two out him. Um, I, one, of, one of the games I actually decked him out because I, uh, he was forced to discard a puzzle of time early. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I was just able to draw two away all his DCEs basically. Um, and he said nothing to attack with at that point. Um, and then the other game I just took six prizes. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, you so you did an ID against your friend? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I pro I probably would have ID against my friend because it's my friend. But then again, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> but I I don't necessarily blame you for doing for doing that either. Like it's it's the smart thing to do. Yeah. So you beat Night March and you're 801. Yep. Going into top 32. So I'm guessing at this point. So, top 32, of course, was in the next day, correct? Yep. Alright, okay, making sure, because I heard, making sure, like, you guys, like, you guys didn't try to squeeze it all in one day. No, I mean, we, we, we didn't finish the, uh, first night round of Swiss until about 9.30 p.m. Okay. So, and, and I hadn't eaten dinner, so I was, oh, God. <laughs> you were just starving. Yeah. When I had celebration dinner at Outback. Yeah. So, uh, going into day two, were there any decks that you heard of that top that you were afraid of, play, of playing? Um, I knew that there was some Vespa Queen, um, but I wasn't really worried about Vespa Queen. Uh, because Jirachi just kind of wins that matchup, as long as they're just running... Most, most Vespa Queen lists just run 4 uh, DCE and no Puzzle Time or anything. Yeah. So, um, uh, unless they get, like, turn one Vile Plume and I, like, can't play anything, and they just bench me, um, Jirachi just pulls that matchup through, generally. Um, That's I knew you that you play were, 3. Yeah, I, I play 3. That's it's, it's like consistency of getting it. Um, you, you have 7 basics, and... Three of them are Jirachi, the other four are Furuki, so... You, <laughs> you have, it's like, like, about half the time, you're probably starting with Jirachi. Exactly. Jirachi's actually a really nice starter in a lot of matchups, because uh, 
It's a it nice price puts to give a, away. Exactly. It puts a body for them to go through instead, until they get a Froki. And um, because so many decks are running DCE, even mm -hmm. if they lose Andre around it and kill a Froki, yeah. they can just respond with one energy with Jirachi. Yep. Um, so, I knew that there was a uh, Mega Mewtwo deck, um, and I, I didn't really know how that matchup would work out. Again, I, I really didn't test this format much, but I mean, thinking about it, I figured it wouldn't be that bad of a matchup. So I, I knew that at least at the higher seedings going to day thirty or to top thirty-two, that everything was a good matchup with that really. So what did you play against in uh, round one or round ten, I should say, in t in uh, top thirty-two? Uh, round 10, I was against Israel Sosa using uh, Evil Tall Zoroark, or Zoroark Reggie Rock. Oh, that, um, wow, he's really good. Yeah, but uh, I, I play against a lot. I mean, SoCal. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's a really good matchup for Greninja, especially because he didn't run any counter stadiums, so my rough seas just stayed out there. Um, <laughs> and as, as, long, as long as I didn't bench too much for Zoroark, yeah. uh, he couldn't set up kills on Greninja's really, because I would just heal and retreat and swap around them. <laughs> and then, you know, when he's charging up an evil tall bench, I would just put damage on it with giant water shuriken. Um, yeah. so, so it's a really good matchup for uh, Greninja, so I uh, 2 would him. Wow. Uh, so, round 11, or round 2, what do you want to call it? How did that work? Uh, round 11, I was against... I, I, I knew he was playing Night March, but at that point I was 9 on 1, and I knew if I just ID'd the rest of the day, that I'd be guaranteed first seed going to top 8, so I just ID'd the next 4 rounds. Wow! You just <laughs> <laughs> so, I saw that you got 4, two, four ties, I was wondering, like, wait, did he just tie those 4? Did just, like, tie, or, or did he ID? Yeah, so, you just uh, straight up... So, because, like, usually you just need, uh, for the most part, uh, about uh, the equivalent of, um, of, of 10 wins, and you... You were 801, and you got the... the 901, yeah. And, yeah, you were pretty much guaranteed in at that point, so you, you felt like there was no need to play it out. And Essentially, and, and I knew they were all good matchups. Um, that, that's why my opponents wanted to ID, because, like, I mean, normally, uh, normally round two of day two, no one wants to ID, except, but, you know, I wanted to, obviously. Um, but and because then they, were, because and they knew the matchup, they knew how bad a matchup was for them, they actually wanted to ID. So. Like yeah, I'll take the idea. I'm actually just kind of surprised you decided that you weren't you weren't gonna be greedy. No, nah, I mean I actually uh the round three of day two, um I knew it was against Wayward, um and I actually seriously contemplated, um scooping the match, to try to increase the chances of getting that Wayward in top eight. Why? Um, just so you can have Wayward in top eight? Yeah, because I mean at that point I knew I was guaranteed top eight. I, I mean, it was just kind of rigging the matchups the best way I can, and Wayward's a really good matchup. Um, I ended up just taking the ID because I wanted to guarantee the first place seating, but... Yeah. Well, it, it, was, it was smart what you did there because at that point you had, you were, uh... Let's see, you, you were 902, uh, 902, and if something weird happened, and if, uh, you did give him the win, and then the next three rounds you had free... You, we, the next, uh, no, the next two rounds, something weird happened, you lost the next two, that could put you in a bit of a jeopardy. Yeah, that, that's basically what it was. I, we knew 30 points was the safe point, so I figure I, I, maybe if I played against it the last round, I would have scooped, but I didn't want to scoop to it before I actually had the guaranteed points. Yeah, that was a smart thing to do. I would have done that too, probably. So, what did you? What, by the way, was the same Waylord you play in uh in uh in day one of Swiss? No, it was actually a different Waylord player. Okay, just making sure because I have heard because I have heard and seen people who played the same opponent in top 32. Well, no, I did. Uh, round uh, round one, I was against. This is round one of day two. I was against Israel Sosa, who I didn't play uh, day one. But then um, round two, I ID'd against Ruben Siska, who was the night march I played in round nine. My, uh, then after that, I ID'd against the Waylord. Um, and then get, right after that, I ID'd against uh, Jeremy Jallen, who was playing Trevenant. It was the same Trevenant that I played day one. So I, I did have two repeats in uh, day two Swiss. And your your partner's like, uh, I know how this matchup goes. I'm not gonna try to. I'm not gonna <laughs> try my luck against you. So I'm gonna take the ID if you're off right. Yeah, basically, it, it was really interesting because uh, I mean, normally at that point, uh, only in the final round did my opponent actually was where they in a point where I did, you know, because I'm in the top eight. Yeah. Um, but just the other three rounds, they just knew the matchup and didn't want to uh, take the chance. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Yeah. So in so round five, all of the the person that person also decided to ID. Uh, did he? I'm guessing that person uh, made it to top eight. 
Uh, yeah, it was uh, not actually she. It was Christy Britton um, oh. playing Toad. And I, I mean, it's, I, it's I, always I, nice I, to see a girl do well. Yeah, actually, there, there was actually uh, two girls in top eight. Wow, nice. So it's always nice to hear. I, I would like for the for a day where it's not unusual for a girl to make top, for like a, several girls to make top eight. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But we just need to make this game more appealing for girls, apparently, for somehow. Make cuter Pokemon more powerful. I don't know how I don't know how we do it, but like we need to do it somehow because like I would like to see a couple girls, a couple more girls play Pokemon. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. So especially competitively, because most of the girls who play are either like Pokemons or, uh, or girlfriends. Though there are like a couple people like Christy who seriously do play com competitively, and that's really cool to see. So. Uh, I, I forgot to ask you going to top 32, but in going to top 32, uh, out of the, uh, in day, were there any po people that, it, uh, uh, you played in day one that also made top 32, uh, other than, like, Is Israel Sos and the Trevenant player you mentioned? Uh, let's see, um, the Greninja player I played around three, I'm pretty sure was, um, 32nd seed. So nice. he, he squeaked in, and, and the Toad team that I played around to, I'm pretty sure was actually 33rd. Ooh. Um, the, uh, the Whale Lord that I won, or won, beat day one, made it into top 32. Um, the Spree Darkrai made it in top 32, the Trevenant made it in top 32, and then the Night March and the Night made it in top 32. So basically, you had a really strong resistance. Yeah, but uh, re resistance actually resets going into day two. I um, know, but I, 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 actually, I did not know that. It's actually cool. But yeah, I mean, it, it's it still matters. You, you, I still had high resistance since I was gonna be playing at the top tables to start. Yeah. So let's, yeah, it, the, the resistance actually resets going into day two. But but that is pretty cool. That is pretty interesting that every single one of your opponent, your opponent side you played for the most part, did make top thirty two. So that just goes to show you how good this deck in this list you had it really is. So how many people that uh, you played either in day one or day two also made a uh, top eight, whether you had uh, or not. Uh, Jeremy Jalen, who was the Trevenant I played both day one and day two, um, he made it into top four, nice. um, and then lost in top four. Um, the Whale Lord from day two that I tied against made it into top eight. Nice. Um, so he, he didn't need your help after all. No, yeah. Uh, the Toad that I, I did against day two made it into top eight. Um, the Night March that I tied against day two made it into top eight. I, I think, yeah, all four of my IDs in day two actually made it into top eight. Nice. So that that idea apparently helped us. Yeah, I guess so. So I'm guessing every one of your opponents is just looking, or is just looking you going, so please beat him. Yeah, essentially. I mean, I mean um, yeah, both in top eight and in top four, I played against Toad, which is such a good matchup for the Greninja. Um, so yeah, walk it, us through your top eight match. Uh, t uh, top eight, um, I was against, I think it was uh, Adrian Amani um, playing Toad, and it was a dis disruption Toad that's. Um, four, uh, four, uh, God, I can't remember the other card, the silent gym or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and red, red cards and hammers and everything. Um, yeah. match, the matchup is really good for Greninja. Um, as, as long as I have anything to play in my first few turns, they really can't just kill anything. Um, especially with Jirachi putting on pressure onto their DZEs, it's so hard for them to, um, actually do anything in the matchup. Um, and then as soon as I have Greninja set up, they just can't kill any of my Greninjas and they just win. Yeah. So so top eight. Um, so do you play that, that? So do you play that person uh, at all in at all in day two? No, I had not, I had not played him yet. Okay. Um. So t top eight, I uh, won the first two games. Um, Jirachi just slowed him down, getting rid of his DCEs, and then set up Greninjas, and then just couldn't kill anything. Hmm. Um. Top four. Game one worked the exact same way, pretty much. I, I was against Tone again. Um, top four, I was against uh, Christy, who was my person I ID'd against in round 14. Um, yep, the last round. Yeah, so uh, game one worked just like that. You know, Jirachi slowed her down, then I got in just out just one. Um, game two, I started lone Jirachi and a handful of Pokemon energy that I couldn't play. <laughs> um, or no, not even energy, because I couldn't start us. I had, I had nothing. Um, so I was just... I started with Jirachi, uh, she went first, she touched DZE, passed, I draw, pass, quaking punch, 
draw, pass, and she couldn't punch for game. So wow. she was actually winning game two, basically, just off the stall out. And then game three worked the same way as um, before, and I was able to win that one. All right, so up to that point, that was your, like, your worst uh, dead draw of all, all day, it seemed. Like, within the, those, uh, with, within, like, 14, like, 10 rounds or so, that was, like, your worst uh, draw or something like that. Yeah, it was that and uh, game one versus Jeremy Jalen in day one. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, that. Th th those, those were, like, my two stall outs before top two. So, now you're in the finals, which you probably at least look like a little surprised at this point that you're here. The yeah, no, I, I was shocked. It was uh, I was so excited and happy. It's like, what am I doing here? <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just thought I had fun. Now I'm in the finals. So, what were you playing against in the finals? Uh, the finals. Um, hold up, sorry, just a moment. Oh, you good? Alright. Um, Marty Reyes. Or Reyes. I don't know, I'm not sure of the pronunciation, but Marty Reyes. Um, that was a Trevenant. Another Trevenant? Yeah. So, um, was it, it the same Trevenant you uh, 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 played against in day one in ID'd? Uh, no. Oh, the, okay. the Trevenant that I beat day one and then ID'd against day two um, lost in top four to Marty. Ah! It's so all that mirror match. That was probably... Yeah. Fun to watch if it was on stream at all. No, there actually wasn't any stream at California States. What? Yeah, I know. I was, I was actually shocked. Right. I, like, what? I, I do well at a tournament. There's no stream, of course. So, um, continue. So, I, I was I was pretty confident with the matchup. Like, at, at this point, I mean, going into top eight, I look over and, like, every single thing is a, comp is a matchup I was really confident in. Wow. Um, Trevenant especially, because I run four FCs. As long as I get some setup going, I generally just win the matchup. You could say that's pretty rough for them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so top two, um, game one, uh, he, he actually, it was really interesting. He, he ran a lot of uh, special energies, actually, yeah. like DCEs and uh, Mysteries. So Drachi was actually slow, able to slow him down a decent bit. Hmm. Um, I was able to... Uh, I, I, I went first, which was nice. I went a coin flip. Um, got to get out some Frokies, got out for Gator, got out for Ninjas, and then just won the matchup from there. Um, I, I think I actually countered all four of his Dimension Valleys with rough seeds that first game, um, which, which is just rough. I mean, he, he keep. I, I actually think the best rep uh, in the matchup with um, Trevenant is to uh, tree slam instead of silent fearing. Um, huh. But he, he he kept trying to silent fear, and I would just counter it with a rough seeds and just wipe all the damage off. Um, so game one, I won like that. Um, game two and game three, I don't think I attached a single energy or did a single thing to both games. Wow. Um, it, it was basically my game two of top four. Um, it, it wasn't, even, I mean, I know when I think about it, I think, well, Trevenant's kind of meant to walk a bit. Yeah. Um, but it, it wasn't even that really. Like, it, if, if I could play trainers, it wouldn't even help me. Um, it, it was really just absolute dead drawing. Um, so both both game and get games two and three, I just absolutely stalled out. And he was able to take both of those. Yeah. So yeah. That the most was extremely anticlimactic for you. You'd like you do well, you do unexpectedly well with this deck, and get all the way to finals and just dead draw. <laughs> but it, it was uh, it, it was kind of go, it was going to the tournament. I had no expectations because I hadn't played so long. Yeah. And I do really well, and it's awesome. And you know, going to top eight, I had expectations since every other deck in top eight is a really good matchup for me. Yeah. And then I ended up losing, so it, it was kind of uh, funny, unfortunate. But like, I, I feel bad, but like at the same time, like I feel like to a certain degree, if you did not dead draw, you probably would have been able to win. But oh well. But like this yeah. deck, like this deck was definitely the the the, the uh, deck to play and. This list seems fairly solid, and it seems like it does fairly well in the mirror match. So, yeah. uh, let's talk about the actual list itself. Uh, yeah. Why three Jirachi? So, um, I, I almost ran two instead of three. Okay. Um, re but the reason why I love Jirachi so much is that it's just so annoying to play against. <laughs> yeah, like, it is. Um, I, I think the reason why it's so powerful isn't because it gets rid of the special energy. That's not why it's so powerful. It's so powerful because 
um, a basic Pokemon with one energy can respond to a special energy attacker. And that's what's really good about it. Like, it's not about getting rid of their special energy. Um, e even though I win by deck out against my March every once in a while because I'm able to just get rid of all their DCEs. Generally, yeah. it's just the fact that um, Grinin is not a fast deck. But being able to respond to a Seismic Toad or a Night March or anything like that with just one basic energy is just so powerful. Um, and then, in addition to that, uh, a, a lot of Greninja lists are running like one Shaman EX. Yeah. Um, but I think that the deck really thrives on not having any EXs. Um, yeah. e even looking back on it and knowing that I lost because I stalled out, I, I still wouldn't add in a Shaman EX. Um, but with if you know if I was just running four Vro four Froki and one Jirachi or even two Jirachi, uh, I I'd give my opponents a lot more mulligans than I wanted to. So it, it also serves the purpose of being a good Pokemon just throw out there at the start of the game and uh, not give your opponent extra cards. But r really, the reason why I ran three was that I just wanted to be able to consistently spam them um, <laughs> because it's such a good response. Uh, it slows your opponent down so much. And with Greninja, that's really what you need because if you, if the, you get to the late game with Greninja, you generally just win. Um, I, I remember in. Uh, Round four, uh, I was against Night March, and I benched three Jirachi turn one. And he was like, "Oh, that's, that's fucking brutal!" And it, it, it just it, it wins so many matchups on its own. <laughs> just just because you can respond from one energy, like it's, it's not even about discarding special energy. It's just um, actively responding for a basic and one energy is just so powerful. Yeah. Okay, now let's talk about uh, you play a four four frog a froggy and froaky with of course the shadow. Uh, uh, Duplicates, and then you also play a three-one, which is fairly sad. I see most people playing uh, the three of the newer one and one of the older one for the most part. That's, that seems to be fairly fairly consistent for me. Everyone plays at least one of the water shuriken. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I actually going into the tournament, I was considering taking out the uh, water shuriken green engine and just running four of the uh, breakpoint one mm -hmm. um, because I found that most of the time having the uh, water shuriken one didn't help me too much. I mean, like, it, it, there, there are situations where it did, but generally it didn't make a huge difference. Um, and having a fourth break point would be more consistent and uh, wouldn't have to worry about discarding them early with Sycamore as much. But I, I ended up running the one uh, Water Shirk and just to kind of have the option, even though that I kind of wish I had the consistency of four, four break point. All right. So now let's talk about your ball count. Uh, I, for the most part, I see the, the ball count be, like, different from list to list to list. And in this list, you play four dive ball, four level ball. Four dive ball is pretty much standard in most lists. But why did you decide to go four, uh, four level ball? Um, really? So um, I, I had actually I was running four dive ball, four level ball before I saw Mises list. Yeah. Um, because I, I saw that if I can get consistently get turn two from eight your water duplicates. Yeah. Um, I mean that's the most important part of the deck. Like the deck is so powerful after that. Um. Level Ball would help me get either a second Froakie turn 1 or a first Froakie turn 1 even. It can get Frogadier. Um, and then more, really importantly, it can get Jirachis, you know? Um, it's like, I have to get my Frogadier set up. Any Level Ball, I can just get out a Jirachi out of my deck. And that's how I ended up with these, you know, Jirachis all over my bench that um, are there and easy to respond with. Yeah. I have some seems to be a uh, favor, like, like an Ultra Ball or two over the Level Ball, just so they can get their, have another ad to get the Greninja and also be able to get some stuff in the discard pile. But, yeah, um... But you don't really need to get stuffed in the discard pile too much since you're not playing Octillery. Which is yeah. another thing I want to talk about. Why, why no Octillery? Um, so, the Octillery is something that I was going back and forth with. Um, if, if Anne was in the format, I probably would have made space for Octillery, mm -hmm. because you, you know, you really need it late game. Um, it would let you refresh off of, like, a one-card hand. Mm -hmm. Um, but I found that uh, having the artillery obviously made the deck less consistent. Yeah. Um, you, you would have to run plays to get him out of the active spot. Um, he's extra clunky cards. And I found that my hand size, a lot of times, was full of more than five cards that I didn't want to get rid of. Um, I, I found that generally I wanted to be hoarding resources in my hand as opposed to trying to fish for new ones. Um, because, I mean, really, I get. My, my, my kind of mindset behind the build was I just wanted to make it as consistent as possible to get the turn two um, water duplicates. I didn't want to take away from that consistency. and I, I just didn't see Octillery adding enough to the deck. Because generally I would have a large hand that was hoarding resources in. Okay. Fair enough. And you're also running a card that I feel like every uh, Greninja deck should probably play, but 
I've been, so I've seen like most don't play, and that's Professor's Letter. Tell me yeah. why you decided to play Professor's Letter other than you know getting two energies at once is pretty good. <laughs> um, so I was testing the list the night before uh, the tournament, oh, those are, and that's fine. I found that getting Frogadier turn two, I had that down. A four level ball, four dive ball was great for that. Um, but I found that oftentimes um, in turn two, I could whiff the energy. Or, you know, off of a, uh, you know, supporter play, I could whiff the energy that I really needed. Um, so I decided to take out some of the techage in the deck to add in a Skyla and a Professor's Letter. Um, because Sky Skyla was a, uh, like, basically both were cards that I could get off of Trainer's Mail um, that would get me energy. Um, Skyla could also give me level balls to get Frog Aetiers or um, Frogies out. And then... Um, Skyla really sets up the turn two for Gator really nicely because turn one I can Skyla for a level ball, and then turn two I can BS you for Skyla for a professor's letter or another level ball or whatever I need. Um, so I decided to take out uh, some of the power and techness from the deck to add in those two cards to just kind of increase the consistency of getting the uh, turn two. Nice. Okay. And, and, I, and, and it, it always gives me a guaranteed, you know, if I have a Skyla discard, I can just BS you for Skyla for a professor's letter whenever I needed energy. Because I, I found that actually the best strategy when I was needing, you know, I needed one or two energies. Um, instead of sycamoring, I would rather fisherman for two energy or something. I, I, <laughs> it's it's so important to not whiff those energies when you need them. Yeah. So another thing I find a little weird, but I can understand it to a certain degree, is starting on the megaphone. I'm guessing that's for the night march players with their uh, fighting fury belts, correct? Um, so actually, it's it's, it's for a uh, a multitude of things. Um, I was debating using Muscle Band instead of Megaphone, because they serve a lot of the same purpose, really. Yeah. Um, and I, I was kind of going back and forth. I was actually leaning towards Muscle Band, but I decided to go with the uh, start of the Megaphone. I'm really glad I did, because um, a, a lot of times, um, it, it matchups other than Night March as well. Um, I, I would be able to discard, you know, two or three tools with the one Megaphone. And it would just have such a big impact on games. Um, and also the Wayward matchup um, with Megaphone becomes a lot better because they can Megaphone off their hard charms and yep. set up that, uh, that two-shot potential. Uh -huh. So, I, so it, really, if it's, it's kind of personal preference. Like, if, if I had run too much of band, it probably wouldn't have made a huge difference. Um, but I, I do prefer the Megaphone. I think it's better. Okay. That's, that's fair. So... Now let's go on to the, your supporter sections, because most of the other items I've got to mention is pretty standard. Uh, via Seeker, Trainer's Mail, yeah, uh, Sacred Ash. And so let's go on to your uh, trainers. Um, for uh, Sigma is pretty standard. Um, why, uh, why run a, why run a Shana instead of a Birch, or why run a Shuffle Draw supporter other than Ace Trainer at all? Because Ace Trainer is pretty good in a deck like this. So, um, Ace Trainer is really good, but um, I, I didn't want to run a third. I, I, I felt the two was enough because yeah. um, I, I wanted something more that I could actively play turn one to help me get out my setup in the front eight years. Um, I mean, t t take you know my uh, top two games where I stalled out as an example. You know, Ace Trainer wouldn't have helped me when I only have one Pokemon out. It's going to die. I'm going to get benched, you know? Yeah. Um, whereas if I had a Shauna, which I didn't, unfortunately, but if, if I did... Um, it would have been better for that. Um, so the Shauna over Birch. Um, so I, I uh, talked to my friend uh, Griffin Pepin from Michigan mm -hmm. um, the two days before the tournament, and he was, kept telling me Shauna's awful. Replace it with Birch. You know, it's 0.5 cards better, right? Uh. Um, and I think people get caught up on in the you know math. They, they, they think they're mathematicians and they look at it and say, oh, you know, Birch is half a card better, um, but the reason why I think Sean is better is that drawing cards from your deck has a diminishing returns, right? Yeah. Uh, dr you know, drawing, you know, five cards instead of four cards is a big difference. You know, drawing, and this, you know, it's an absurd number as an example, drawing 13 cards instead of 12 cards isn't a big difference. You yeah. know, um, each additional card you draw matters less than the last one. Um, and I did some testing. Basically, I would just, I uh, put out, um, a Froki and my Shauna off the side of my deck, right? And I'll just uh. shuffle my deck and draw um, four card hands, five card hands, seven card hands. Um, and I was basically looking for 
if I had a supporter to play the next turn. I was kind of using that as my uh, what I'm looking for as basis. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, average, I average the two percentages between four and seven card hands to get That's an average smart. percentage of stallouts from Birch. Um, and I took the percentage of stallouts from Shauna. Um, and I found that Birch tends to actually stall me out about 5% more likely than Shauna does. Huh. Um, and, and not only just looking at stallouts, looking at, I mean, you can apply that to looking for any card in your deck, really. Um, on, on average, drawing that fifth card instead of the fourth card, or on, on top of the four, first four cards, mm -hmm. actually means more than drawing the sixth and seventh combined, usually. Wow. Because of the diminishing return on card draw. That's that's pretty smart math. That's a pretty clever thing you did. And I also think that playing Shauna or Birch is situational for decks. I feel like if you're playing Octillery, Birch is the better play simply due to the fact that, like, you know... Uh, you, can, you can draw the fifth, yeah. Yeah, you can draw the fifth off of the Octillery if you need to. Yeah. And the other nice thing about either Shauna or Birch, um, I, I didn't think the mirror matchup was going to be a huge um, deal, mm -hmm. but having Shauna or Birch as a way to shuffle your hands in your deck and not your opponent's... Yeah. Um, makes a big difference that matchup. Yeah. Um, you know, if, I mean, if you wanted to go absurdly mirror match heavy, you could <laughs> run a Durant. But other than that, really, one Shauna or one Birch is the best deck for mirror. Sweet. So, why no Judge? Because um, Ace Trainer? Yeah, so Ace Trainer does a lot of the same ju uh, job the Judge does. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, I found that uh, with this deck, I kind of wanted to stock up big uh, resource heavy hands. And Judge kind of went against that. It, it would limit my options to, for my next turn when I wanted much more options than, I, than my opponents generally needed. Okay, yeah, that's fair. And last important we want to talk about is the Skyla. I'm guessing just so you can get a uh, reach for the letter and Sicker Dash? Because those uh, are like the only ones other than the Shauna and the Skyla. Yeah, well, it, it, it's, um... I, I added it in mostly... For the professor's letter, I, I kind of added in the two together. I wouldn't have added in one without the other, probably. Yeah, um, that's smart. But on, on top of getting professor's letter, it could also get little balls if I needed it, or my rusties if I needed it, or dive balls if I needed it. it really, really, could just get whatever I needed. That's um, fair. It's, it's pretty good. Or a supporter. Or a supporter. <laughs> and then um, turn one Skyla into turn two Skyla with VS Seeker just sets up your turn two play so well. Yeah, that's fair. So... I've noticed that a lot of your Ninja decks don't run the Rough Seas, uh, and you run four. Why four, and why Rough Seas at all? Uh, um, so, so actually, before the tournament, I was seriously debating um, running Silent Lab instead of Rough Seas. Mm -hmm. um, I, I knew that I wanted to run four stadiums, because I saw that stadium was really important in a lot of matchups. Yeah. Um, I, I saw I was testing a, a Seismitoad deck that used you know four Silent Labs and four red cards and tried to really disrupt your opponent with that. Um, shut down their, sh their shaman um, setup, and I, I kind of really like that. It, it it seemed to go along well with the Greninja's strategy of slowing down your opponent with the draw cheats and everything. Yeah. So I was seriously considering switching up the four rough seas for um, Silent Labs. Um, the reason why I didn't is basically Trevenant. Mm. Um, it rough seas just means so much in the Trevenant matchup, and also the Evil Tom matchup, which I was kind of less concerned with with Trevenant. But four rough seas is just such a huge deal against Trevenant. Oh yeah. So, I know we kind of sort of touched on this a little bit uh, already with the with the questions about your deck list, uh, but uh, what what uh, deck choice what uh, uh, deck choices were you consider what uh, not deck choices but uh, what uh, what cards were you thinking of adding to the list that you eventually did not, or what cards that you wish you did that you decided at the last minute that you didn't want? Or um, my biggest considerations was. Um one, whether or not I would actually run the one Water Shark in Greninja, I was uh, stuck with Wing of Lion. I did decide to use it, yeah. um, and I'm glad I made that choice. Okay. Um, adding the Professor's Letter and the Sky Love was a kind of last-minute decision. Uh, I, I actually had not played any games before the tournament with this exact list. Wow. Um, I, I was kind of, the night before, I was kind of intuitively like, screw it, you know, I want more energy, Sky Love, Professor's Letter. Um, uh, what else was I considering? The, the, the muscle band instead of megaphone was something I was kind of stuck between, but I just decided to go with the megaphones. Yeah, that um, was a bit weird, the, the having no uh, bands of the deck. But yeah, seems like it worked I, for you. Yeah, I, I was happy with the choice. Um, but really, I think if I had run two muscle bands instead of the two megaphone, it wouldn't have made a huge difference. Yeah. Um, I was considering trying out Silent, Se Silent Lamb instead of Rough Seas, but I did decide to just go with Rough Seas for Trevenant, and I'm glad I did that. Yeah. Um, Nothing else that I was considering before this tournament, 
in retrospect, I might have considered adding more Skyla. Um, both because it means consistency in every matchup. Uh. Um, and then against Trevenant, it can get those rough Cs, which is really important. So um, what would you have taken out for the uh, second Skyla? So, I mean, so that's that's the difficulty, right? It's yeah. what do you take out? Um, Shaw is a mail? possibility. No, I, I, I like the four trainers mail. Okay. Um, if, if I was going specifically for a Trevenant, I would cut down on the trainers mail. But in general, I think trainers mail is really powerful in the deck. Um, Shauna was is one option that I might cut out for Skyla in hindsight. Um, but in, in a mirror match, having the Shauna is really important. Okay. Um, and then second Ace Trainer would be the other card that I was consider that I would consider cutting for the second Skyla. But again, Ace Trainer is just so powerful. Um, yeah. in, in hindsight, though, I kind of in hindsight, second Skyla is the only card I would have added. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there's anything I actually would have taken out for it. So so I, I think in hindsight, I'm I'm happy with the list. Yeah, this list seems extremely solid. To be perfectly honest, I might be showing a bit of favoritism here, but I think this this is my personal favorite list I've seen. I've seen several. Greninja list, and I've interviewed several people with Greninja list, and I really do like this list. There's no rare candy. It's extremely consistent. It's extremely solid, in my opinion. So, Thank you. Uh, not only I would start at the, as the final question, I would ask you uh, how, how many championship points uh, you, you have, but as you already <laughs> said in the video, you've kind of established you, you this was your first tournament since Worlds, and well, being placing second in the states that's felt like more like a regionals, yeah. You you came you have like ninety points now. Yep, I am at ninety out of three hundred. Um, I'm still I'm still hopeful for my world stuff like that actually. Um, you, wait, you're wait. Say that again. Ninety out of three hundred. Oh, ninety out of three hundred. Okay, thanks for telling yeah. us. But I, I'm I'm still hopeful for my world's invite. Um, Just do well, regionals. Exactly. Well I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident coming out of states. Um, I mean, cities. After trying to get a, you know, now trying to get a world invite without going to cities, I've found that cities is really the key to. World's invites. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I'm still hopeful. I, if I can get, I think I need like what top four at regionals is a hundred. So if I just top four at two regionals and win a league challenge, I'll be there. So. Yeah. <laughs> Spam those re league challenges like no other, my friend. Spam them. Get yeah. like get ninety others, so you're one eighty, then win a regionals. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Actually, just top four like six of them, and then you get one fifty, and then win a regionals. Yeah, that's what you need to do. Just do it. So I would be. Yeah. So I'm kind of rooting for you, dude. I kind of hope I you. It. I'm, I'm. I'm trying. We'll see. Yeah. So, I hope you uh make your world's invite, but it is it's it's a tad bit but to ask for, but you're very good as as you we've seen right here. So um. Yeah. Thank you once again for being on my channel and I've been doing letting me do a video with you and your list. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. And I hope you. Viewers at home, enjoy today's video. Um, I will probably be doing a couple more interviews in the future, uh, especially for because I have several interviews lined up for states, and I probably will be doing interviews for regionals and maybe even nationals. And I hope you guys like today's video. Uh, please like, subscribe, all that silly stuff. Follow me everywhere you can. I shall see you guys hopefully uh, next time.